to applaud everybody. <laughs> in the molecular form of James Doohan. And the down-to-earth Miriam Margulies. But come with me now, friends, back through the veils of time. To 1966, when a motley crew boldly went to challenge space, the final frontier. Among them, James T., the captain, a doctor called Bones, a Russian, a Chinaman, a black girl with a huge brooch sticking out of her ear. <laughs> and a funny looking fellow with pointy ears. Among them also a chief engineer called Scotty, who kept his dilithium crystals glowing when all about him were losing theirs. Let's beam him up. James Doohan. <laughs> Good to see that the old molecules have rearranged themselves in a pleasing fashion for you. Oh, well, uh, I, I noticed that your molecules are not too bad either. You know, you're, no, a, you're a very pleasant chap. I have a few molecules too many. <laughs> oh, yeah. So do I. <laughs> <laughs> That's Scott's accent. Well, not, I, I, not... it's, it's, uh, it's from Aberdeen. Is it? Aye. Are you... But, I mean, you're an American. Canadian. I'm a Canadian. Aye. Uh, Irish Canadian. But I, uh, I can do any accent in the world. All I have to do is hear it. And, uh, but I, I had a chap uh, next to me in, uh, when I was up in Catterick Camp in 1940. I came over early, uh, uh, you know, for the Canadians uh, in, yeah. during the war. And uh, the, the fellow next to me was from Aberdeen. And uh, I tell you what, for the first week, I couldn't understand a word he was saying. <laughs> and, uh, and, also, and, uh, and a couple of times on the show, Gene Roddenberry, my, uh, the creator of Star Trek, uh, said, um, you know, he says, Jimmy, he says, you mustn't make it too thick. Well, you won't be understood. I said, oh, okay, Gene. So what you're hearing now is my clarity version. All right? <laughs> For the American audience, yes. Oh, yes. Wouldn't know, yeah. yeah. And I mean, you do every kind of accent. But, but this, this part has kind of typecast you. I mean, you, you're expected to speak with a Scots accent for the rest of your life, aren't you? Aye, that's true. <laughs> Why did they pick a Scot? Is it because the No, no, I picked the Scottish. Did you? But I just oh. thought maybe because usually ship's engineers were always, in the old movies, were always Scots, weren't they? But you, I know, but you don't tell that to, uh, to an American. No. You know, you... Uh, I, I, anyway, I did seven or eight different accents for them, and Gene Roddenberry said to me, he, uh, he says, which do you like? I said, well, I said, if he's going to be uh, 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 an engineer, he has to be Scots. Yeah. You well, know, poor old Scotty. He never got down to the face of the planet, did he? Oh, he was not... always upstairs, beaming people up and down. And... Well, somebody has to look after the ship, you know. Of course. And the lithium crystals. Aye, that's true. You have to stroke them every now and then, you know. Keep them warm. Jim was always breaking up and you stopped him, didn't you? You used to pull them together. Aye, that's true. That's true. <laughs> Lovely days for you, though, weren't they? Oh, yes. There's a... oh, the shows were great. I mean, the stories were fabulous. We loved doing those stories. Any actor loves a good story, you know. Yeah. It's just a marvelous kind of a thing when you, we, we would sit around a table and read the next five stories. You know, when somebody would say, oh boy, why did you read this one? Oh, that's, wow, that's why did you read unusual. this one and this one? You know, most marvelous. Unusual. And marvelous the, of course, stuff. it's still tremendously popular as, as a cult series. It's, it's running probably all over the place at any time True. for the last 25 years. So tell me, do you go to the conventions? Because I know they have groups with Trekkies. Do you go to the Trekkie conventions? Today? I certainly do. I may be uh, anywhere from 20 to 25 a year, and they are absolutely so much fun. It's unbelievable, really. The, uh, I, I never see a Trekkie at a convention, or a two-day or three-day convention, that isn't smiling and rushing to the next episode of something, yeah. you know, that's going on. But how old are they? I mean, are they, are they people that... I grew up with, with the series 25 years ago. No, they're from this age to that age. Yeah. But let me tell you something that's very interesting, and uh, is that at every convention that I have been at uh, in the past three years, I have asked the question, how many are at their first Star Trek convention? And do you know that 80 to 85% of the hands go up? Never been at one before. I said, oh, are we going to have fun, you know? Yeah. And yeah. it's marvelous. The, do you remember when they beamed me up, Scotty, which became, of course, a tremendous catchphrase, and still is. Right. Do you remember how, when that started, or whether it was used an no. awful lot? Of, why actually, I, actually, I don't. Uh, I, I agree with uh, some of the fans uh, that uh, it was beam me up, Scotty. Uh, in that phrase, was never actually said on the show. It would uh, be Mr. Scott, beam me up, or uh, 
uh, or Scotty, uh, beam us up, or something like that. But the the public caught on to beam us up, Scotty. Yeah. They attached my name uh, and title uh, entirely to the uh, the beam us up part, you know. And it is it's a great posterity thing, you know. Wonderful. It's fantastic. Yeah. You have it on if you. I'm sure it won't be for years yet, but on your gravestone. I. They beamed him up. They beamed him up. You know. <laughs> you know what? Any time uh, uh, that anybody says. Beam me up, Scotty, after I'm dead. It'll be like instant sainthood. <laughs> <You know? laughs> and the movies, of course. That was terrific. When all, when all this, the telly series finished, a few years went by, and then suddenly they decided to make movies, and they've been enormously successful. Well, it wasn't a few years. It was 10 years before Paramount finally got the message, you know. And there were two of those years that I didn't work one bit. And, uh, you know, Hard I was death. typecast. You know, I did a movie in Spain in 1971 with Richard Harris and a lot of other gorgeous English actors. And um, when I got back home, was, uh, I'd walk into offices and the secretary would say, oh, Mr. Scott or Scotty or something like that. Walk into the producer's office. Exactly the same thing. You know, it was terrible. After hearing that a number of times, I said to myself, oh, as soon as she said, oh, Mr. Scott, I said to myself, hey, I'm not going to get this job. Yeah. You know. So it was a, it was a double benefit not only not only to your career but to your pockets when when the movies started again. Oh yeah, well, yeah, it was great. Uh, it was great. And finally, of course, they've been directed by Mr. Spock, by by Leonard Nimoy, and by the captain himself. Yeah. Have you ever had any urge, any ambition to direct? Never. Yeah. I tell you, I uh, uh, went to a lot of schools over here, including officer school at Alton Towers, which is now an amusement park, as you all know. Yeah. Uh, I went to artillery officer school there, and um, I uh, gave so many orders uh, during that time, and I had to train a lot of people for the invasion, of which I was a, a good part myself. And uh, I just don't want to give anybody any orders anymore. I simply want to be the best actor I know how to be, and I work hard. Can we just see a little clip from the new one, which Hi. is Star Trek The Final Frontier? Captain, we can't trust anyone now. If we could send a distress signal. There is an emergency sending apparatus in the forward observation room. The only trouble is it's up there. We're down here. We might be able to reach it by means of turbo shaft number three, which is closed for repairs. It's a long and dangerous climb. Some of us get awful long and dangerous climb. Mr. Scott, get the transporter working. If we can contact the rescue ship, we'll need it. Which way to the turbo shaft? Head down that tunnel to the hydro vent and turn right. Then left at the blow screen. You got me, Mr. Scott. You're amazing. There's nothing amazing about it. I know this ship like the back of my hand. <laughs> that some set in there a stretch for miles. Okay, I, actually, that set was built just for that line. Just so you could crack Two hundred thousand dollars set just for that line, and. Uh, the, the, the thing was that we, uh, we had to do it about five takes, even though the sound of that, it doesn't hurt me at all, you know. Yeah. I'm a very hard-headed uh, fellow. Yeah. But there was a piece of styrofoam up there, backed by a bit of rubber, and uh, I don't everything else. don't ruin it all. Oh, well. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but uh, the, uh, the cameras, uh, I was too fast for them once. Once was perfect, and three other times the cameras uh, were, they had some fault with yeah. them. I'm glad that you've joined us. It's, it's nice to see you wearing the, the blazer oh, as well. Right. The... It's my artillery yeah. and my air observation uh, yeah. uh, flying thing for the artillery. Jolly good to see you. Thank you, James. Thank you. James Doohan, ladies and gentlemen. Stop. Stop. Live long and prosper, Jim. Now, did I mention Miriam Margulies and Ben Elton? They're up there. In